Greetings all and welcome back to the channel. Retro gaming enthusiasts have been eagerly awaiting the arrival of two new contenders in the handheld gaming arena. The Anne Burnick RG28XX and the Miu A30. Both come at roughly the same price point, but how do they compare? I took a look at some of the experiences hands-on reviewers have been having with these and set out a quick concise summary for you to help you decide. I also want to make a case for another handheld that would serve you better. Watch till the end if you want to find out which unit this is. Also, remember to like and subscribe if you found some value from the video. It is much appreciated and helps me out immensely to keep on making these. So without further ado, let's compare the specs on these two units. The Anne Burnick RG28XX boasts the H700 quad-core processor that is found in the RG35XX range, coupled with 1GB of RAM and a Mali G31 MP2 GPU. This combination promises smooth performance for a wide range of retro gaming systems, including PlayStation 1, N64 and even some Dreamcast titles. On the other hand, the Miu A30 is powered by the all-winner A33 quad-core processor, with a Mali 400 MP2 GPU and 512MB of RAM, targeting lower-end systems such as SNES, Game Boy Advance and Neo Geo. It's capable of some basic Dreamcast and N64 performance, but a lot of the more 3D heavy titles will not be playable. Both handhelds feature a 2.8-inch IPS display with a resolution of 640x480, ensuring crisp visuals. However, the screen on the RG28XX was notably brighter according to the reviews I checked, offering better visibility in outdoor conditions. Battery life is also a crucial aspect of any portable device, and the RG28XX shines in this department with its reported 6-8 hours of gameplay. The A30 on the other hand falls quite a bit behind with a battery life of 2-4 hours. One reviewer did note that the A30 seems to do better when put into sleep mode. The 28XX seems to use more of its battery when in sleep mode, so keep that in mind when choosing between these two. The 28XX has HDMI out and two SD card slots, whereas the A30 has only one slot and does not currently have any output ability. However, the A30 has built-in Wi-Fi capability, so you will be able to connect to the internet more easily and earn those retro achievements that we all love so much. The 28XX also has a 3.5-inch headphone jack, whereas you need to use a USB-C adapter to connect headphones to the A30. Unfortunately, when you use this adapter, you only get mono audio, so in this aspect, the 28XX is definitely better. But before we go on, I have to tell you about a robbery that we had at our local police station here. Apparently, all the toilets were stolen. The police are saying they have nothing to go on. <laughs> I like telling corny dad jokes, okay? You'll learn to love me for them. Joking aside, let's look at the design and ergonomics of these units. In this area, both handles have their strengths. The Anburnic unit's D-pad precision really impressed most reviewers, whereas the testing on the A30 seemed to indicate that it was less precise, which means you may get some false diagonals in games that might frustrate you. The A30, on the other hand, impressed reviewers with its larger face buttons. The inclusion of an analog stick is also a welcome addition, which is something the 28XX does not have. The plastic texture on the 28XX was more pleasing to reviewers compared to the glossy plastic of the A30. The A30 comes in a very nostalgic Famicom look though, with a front gold plate that makes it look almost identical to the SNES Famicom controllers that was a staple of my youth. Just note that it does not look like these will be interchangeable as per the rumours. Hands on reviewers found it glued down, so there will probably not be official interchangeable faceplates. Nothing should stop the modding community from creating these though. Hint, hint. I would definitely take the risk of ungluing it somehow if there were custom faceplates available. That said, let's move on to performance. In this category, the 28XX takes the lead. Its newer, more powerful processor and GPU combination allows for smoother emulation of demanding systems like PlayStation 1, Nintendo 64, and most Dreamcast titles. The Miu A30, while capable of running lower-end systems flawlessly, struggles with more resource-intensive games on platforms like Dreamcast and PSP. This is mostly due to its less powerful processor that is roughly 10 years old now. One could argue that these units are actually only suited for PS1 and below, as on most of those systems the games did not require an analog stick. But that leaves you begging the question then as to why Miu included this on the A30 at all. Despite the lack of an analog stick, reviewers found playing Dreamcast and N64 titles on the 28XX very enjoyable. This line of thought brings me to the additional third unit I mentioned at the beginning of the video, which is the Anne Burnick RG35XXH. It has dual analog sticks with a 3.5 inch screen, 
and the same processor and RAM as the 28XX. It is also regularly on sale at a price that is very close to these two units and is still quite pocketable in my opinion. So why not rather opt for this unit? If you're interested, I will leave a link in the description below. But if you'd still prefer one of these more pocketable units, let's take a look at the pros and cons to help you make a decision. The RG28XX has a powerful processor and GPU for smooth emulation. Its display is bright and more vibrant than that of the A30. It has excellent battery life and an HDMI output for big screen gaming. On the downside, it lacks analog sticks and the buttons may be too small for some users. On the other hand, the A30 has larger face buttons and a D-pad for more comfortable gameplay. It includes an analog stick and it is also available in the nostalgic Famicom controller style, which I personally love. On the downside though, it has limited performance on demanding systems, a shorter battery life and a dimmer display compared to the 28XX. In conclusion, both the 28XX and the A30 offer unique strengths and will probably appeal to different types of gamers. The 28XX is my clear choice when comparing these two though, due to the excellent performance and battery life. If it had an analog stick, it would have won by a larger margin in this comparison though, as it would have been able to offer better control of the N64 and Dreamcast titles it plays so well. As stated though, I would personally rather opt for the RG35XXH before I pick up one of these units. Mind you, that would only be if I could get it on sale. It just offers much better value in my opinion, but that might just be me. If you're looking for an extremely pocketable handheld with loads of battery life, the 28XX could be for you. I will leave links in the description below if you are looking to pick one up. If you want some more details on the 28XX or the 35XXH, you can click on the links on screen now for my overviews on those. That's it for this video though. Have a nice day and I will catch you in the next one.